Hi everyone, we're ready for chapter 9 of Lions at Lunchtime, and it's called Tiptoe. Jack and Annie crouched in the tall grass. There was a big lion, three lionesses, and a bunch of cubs. I think they're sleeping, whispered Annie. Yeah, said Jack, but for how long? He pulled the Africa book from his pack and opened it. He found a picture of lions sleeping under a tree. He read in a whispery voice. After a pile of lions has eaten, they rest for a few hours. The other... What did they have for lunch? Annie broke in. Don't ask, said Jack. He kept reading. Sensing that the lions are not hunting at the moment, the other animals graze nearby. If they can graze, then we're safe, said Annie. She started to stand. Wait. Jack pulled her down. Not so fast. He peered around. The words in the book seemed true. The zebras and giraffes didn't seem to be bothered by the lions at all. They might be safe, but I'm not sure about us, said Jack. We need a plan. What if we wait till they leave, said Annie. That could take hours, said Jack. Plus, they might be hungry again by then. All right, said Annie. So here's the plan. We tiptoe, said Jack. Tiptoe? Yeah. That's your whole plan, said Annie. Yeah, tiptoe to the rope ladder, said Jack very quietly. Good plan, Annie teased. Just do it, said Jack. He stood up slowly. Annie stood with him. They began tiptoeing through the grass very slowly. The lion flicked his tail. Jack and Annie froze. When his tail was still again, they moved again. Suddenly, high-pitched laughter split the air. Jack and Annie stopped. The hyenas were back. They were standing off to the side watching Jack and Annie. Jack and Annie made silent monster faces and shook their fists, but the hyenas only laughed some more. The big lion stirred lazily. He opened his golden eyes. Jack felt the hair raise on the back of his neck, but he didn't move an inch. The lion lifted his head and yawned. His giant teeth gleamed in the sunlight. The lion turned his head as he looked around sleepily. Jack held his breath as the lion's gaze rested on him. The lion sat straight up. His piercing yellow eyes met Jack's. Jack's heart raced. His mind raced. He remembered something he'd read, lions avoid giraffes. Jack looked around. There was a giraffe walking toward the tree that the magic tree house was in. Suddenly, he had a new plan. Get under the giraffe, he whispered. Now you're the one who's not, Sandy whispered back. But Jack grabbed her hand and he pulled her over to the giraffe and underneath it. The giraffe's legs were so long, Jack and Annie could stand up another, could stand up under it. Jack's head barely brushed the giraffe's golden belly. The tall creature froze for a few seconds. Then she moved slowly toward the tree. Jack and Annie walked in the same rhythm as the giraffe. They got closer and closer to the treehouse, and closer and closer to the pride of lions. The big lion had stood up. He watched them moving under the giraffe. When the rope ladder was just a few feet away, Jack and Annie dashed out from under the giraffe to the rope ladder. Annie scrambled up first. Jack followed right behind her. As they climbed, the lion growled and leaped at the ladder. The hyenas laughed. Jack climbed faster than he had ever climbed. He leaped after Annie into the treehouse. Annie had already unrolled the scroll. The riddle was gone. In his place was the shimmering word, honey. Jack grabbed the Pennsylvania book. He opened it and found the picture of Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, he said. Just then, the giraffe stuck her head through the window. Bye, honey, said Annie, and she kissed the giraffe on the nose. The wind started to blow. The tree house started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. 
that's the end of chapter 9, and the next chapter is called After Lunch.